Creatine, that simple compound that has been talked about in the fitness world for decades. And recently it seems to have re-emerged as the talk of the town, or social media. And for good reason. Recent research is uncovering some very interesting benefits beyond just strength and athletic performance. And this research is showing that your brain and nervous system might be wanting to suck up some of that creatine that you just ingested. And so today, instead of just telling you what the benefits of creatine are, we're also going to show you how it actually works to improve athletic performance and how it can also lead to some of these other potential benefits for your brain and nervous system. We'll also talk about how it's made and stored, how much of it you can get from food versus supplementation, and how much you need to take for various benefits. It's going to be an energetic one. So let's jump into this anatomical and physiological awesomeness. So what is creatine? Creatine is a nitrogen-containing compound similar to protein. It's made up of three amino acids called arginine, glycine, and methionine. And as we're soon going to find out, it plays a very important role in the rapid regeneration of energy, especially for these amazing structures that you can see here called skeletal muscles. But how do we get it? Well, we can actually get creatine in two ways, through our diet, and we can actually synthesize it. Creatine is found in certain food sources, specifically foods like beef and fish. So those who consume those types of meats can get anywhere from one to two grams of creatine per day. And creatine can be directly absorbed through the mucosal lining of the gut without the need to break it down. However, if we're dealing with somebody who's a non-meat eater, maybe a vegan or a vegetarian, in those cases, they'll get negligible amounts, almost none at all. So that might beg the question, could you actually develop a creatine deficiency and miss out on this potential energy source? Luckily, no, because remember, it's built from those three amino acids. And as long as you're consuming those amino acids, in other words, getting adequate protein intake from other sources, there are certain organs throughout the body that can synthesize creatine. The two main ones are the amazing liver that you can see right here, as well as these two cool little organs that we have on the tray here, the kidneys. Now, whether you consume the creatine in your diet or it's synthesized in the liver or kidneys, that creatine will then be transported throughout the bloodstream and taken up by mostly the skeletal muscles. And so you could kind of think of it as filling your skeletal muscles up like little creatine gas tanks. Now, a third of that creatine going into the skeletal muscle will just stay as regular old creatine, but about two thirds of it will get phosphorylated and become something called creatine phosphate, also sometimes referred to as phosphocreatine. And that's going to be very important in just a second. But one other little fact about consuming meat versus not consuming meat, a lot of the research is pretty consistent in showing that those who do not consume meat, although they wouldn't be deficient in creatine, they still tend to have lower overall amounts of creatine in the skeletal muscle compared to those who do consume meat, which could potentially negatively impact performance in certain types of exercise. And those types of exercise we'll address shortly. But luckily, if you choose not to consume meat, you can get creatine through supplementation. And that is kind of one of the main points of this video is to discuss if it makes sense to increase creatine levels through supplementation more than what you could get naturally in your diet. And with all this talk about creatine, wouldn't it be nice to have an incredible source of creatine supplementation? And that's where the sponsor of today's video comes in, Create. These guys created the first creatine monohydrate gummy, which is awesome for multiple reasons. One, they use the highest quality of CreaPure creatine monohydrate, which has been third party tested for quality. Plus, they taste great as they come in flavors like blue raspberry or sour green apple. And for me, I love the convenience. No need to mix it in with a drink or shake. You can just pop a few of them into your oral cavity and chew them up, which I especially love when I go out of town. I no longer have to pack a whole bottle of creatine or transfer some of it to a little Ziploc bag. But they also have single serving powder sticks for those of you that like the more traditional powder, which is also convenient to pack with you wherever you go. Now, I do wanna address the elephant in the room here. I get that I'm doing a video on creatine and the sponsor of today's video provides creatine. But I've been taking creatine for years now and I talk a lot about it with patients and friends and I find very few reasons for people not to be supplementing with creatine. So if there is a high quality creatine product like Create, I can definitely support that. And as we are going to continue to learn throughout this video, creatine has multiple benefits from improving exercise performance and, spoiler alert, even improving cognitive function, helping with sleep deprivation, and more. So if you're interested, go to trycreate.co slash humananatomy and use our code 
Human Anatomy to get 30% off. That link will also be in the description below. And now, let's get back to the physiology of creatine. So how does creatine work? And how does it help provide the rapid regeneration of energy within our cells? Well, we'll first focus on what happens in our skeletal muscle cells, also known as skeletal muscle fibers. And here we have this ever so accurate drawing that you can see with this glorious pectoralis major, totally looks like the real thing. And we also have the rectus abdominis here, but this could be applied to any skeletal muscle that you're working out. When our skeletal muscle fibers contract, they utilize or burn through the energy currency of our cells called ATP or adenosine triphosphate. And that phosphate is going to be key in just a second. ATP is only stored in limited amounts in your muscle tissue. So when we're exercising, we're burning through it like crazy. And since we only have limited amounts, our body has some pretty incredible ways to synthesize more ATP. And there are three energy systems that do this. The first two are done anaerobically, or in other words, without oxygen. And those are the creatine phosphate energy system, and the other is glycolysis. The third is oxidative phosphorylation, which uses oxygen, or in other words, is the aerobic pathway that occurs in the mitochondria. But for this video, we're obviously mostly gonna be focusing on the creatine phosphate energy system, also called the ATP phosphocreatine system. And this creatine phosphate system is best suited for very high intensity exercise, things that last about five to 10 seconds, like a full sprint, max vertical jumping, or high intensity weight training with heavy weights and low reps. So when you're contracting your muscles during that sprint or heavy lift, you're going to start burning through that ATP. As you burn through an ATP molecule, you'll break off a phosphate and that releases the energy necessary for the muscle contraction. But that ATP will then become the ADP, which is adenosine diphosphate. And this is where the creatine gets involved. And it's quite amazing. Remember, about two thirds of the creatine stored in your skeletal muscles was stored as creatine phosphate. And with the help of an enzyme called creatine kinase, that phosphate attached to the creatine is going to be broken off and used to rephosphorylate ADP back into ATP. In other words, think of it as donating its phosphate to ADP in order to create more ATP that can be used for those high intensity muscle contractions. And this is an extremely fast process. It's only one chemical step or one chemical reaction. So really convenient for high intensity muscle contractions that need energy quickly. But there is a limit to this. Yes, it's a fast way to replenish ATP, but it only lasts about five to 10 seconds because we only have so much creatine phosphate stored in our skeletal muscle tissue. And after these high intensity muscle contractions, all we're left with is creatine. So how do we restore it back to creatine phosphate? Well, it's going to take energy to rephosphorylate that creatine. And we're going to get that energy from another energy system. After you go for a sprint or do a set of heavy reps, you rest between sets and you'll notice that you're breathing heavy. And the main reason you're breathing heavy is because you are utilizing oxidative phosphorylation, that aerobic energy system that I briefly mentioned earlier that utilizes oxygen within the mitochondria to generate high amounts of ATP. And this is how you replenish the ATP that you just burned through during that high intensity set, as well as provides enough energy to rephosphorylate the creatine back into creatine phosphate so that you can use that fast creatine phosphate energy system again for the next sprint or next high intensity set after resting about one to three minutes, as that's about how long it takes to rephosphorylate the creatine back into creatine phosphate. So answering the big question, can we pack more creatine into the skeletal muscle tissue in the form of creatine phosphate in order to improve athletic performance? Well, the data pretty clearly shows yes. Most people can increase their creatine muscle storage from about 10 to 40%. Now, some people don't respond much to creatine, but the majority of individuals can get those increases. But how much would you have to consume in order to increase it by that amount? Well, it's about five grams per day for benefits in exercise performance but we are going to talk about a different dose for some other potential benefits in just a minute. But creatine monohydrate is the most researched and effective form. And some people will ask, can I get it in the form of food? Technically, yes. If you want to consume every piece of meat in sight, because you would have to consume a ton of beef or fish 
to get five grams of creatine. And when you compare that to how easy it is to just take a few gummies or powder, it's a lot more feasible to take it as a supplement. People can also do creatine loading by taking about 20 grams per day for five to seven days, then maintain with five grams after that. The idea is to increase the levels more quickly if you're a little impatient. But the most important part is being consistent with that five grams per day to maintain those levels. Now, once the levels are increased, what does that mean for athletic performance? Well, you'll often hear people say that creatine supplementation increases strength, but this can be a little misleading because it doesn't magically increase your max bench press or make you a faster sprinter overnight. That's not how creatine works. It more indirectly increases strength over time due to its effects on your training sessions. And what I mean by that is based on what we've learned about the creatine phosphate energy system, that system only lasted for about the first five to 10 seconds of high intensity exercise until we ran out of that creatine phosphate. Then we have to either shift to anaerobic glycolysis if we wanna continue the exercise or decrease the intensity. But that creatine phosphate system was all about replenishing ATP for again that first five to 10 seconds. But if we supplement and increase our creatine phosphate stores, we can continue that high intensity activity a little bit longer. Maybe you can sprint at that intensity for a couple seconds more. Maybe there's a weight you could only do six reps with, but now on creatine, you might be able to do eight or nine reps. So you are increasing your workload per session at that high intensity. And over time, that's going to pay dividends in your muscular adaptations and will increase your strength levels more efficiently because your workload is increased compared to if you are not using creatine. But creatine isn't just for your muscles. There's more and more information showing that it has some beneficial effects on the nervous system and even cognition. Just like in skeletal muscles, creatine gets stored in the brain, particularly in neurons and supporting cells called astrocytes, where it helps with energy production by increasing creatine phosphate stores. This boosts brain energetics, helping to regenerate ATP more efficiently to fuel demanding neural processes reduces oxidative stress, and even helps maintain pH levels during high energy demands. Recent meta-analyses show it can improve cognitive function and memory in healthy adults, enhance short-term and long-term memory, mental clarity, processing speed, and even executive function. Now, I do wanna say that all of those seem like great benefits, and they are, but I don't wanna give you the idea or the impression that you are just going to have this jolt of lightning with your memory, clarity, or processing speeds. These studies showed a small but noticeable difference in young people with more moderate differences in elderly people. So there seems to be an even greater cognitive benefit on older individuals. But here's something that is very interesting. The cognitive benefits of creatine seem to be noticeably greater when a person is more neurologically fatigued, maybe towards the end of a workday or in stressful or sleep deprived situations. And this makes sense based on how we learned creatine worked in muscle. Creatine helped extend the amount of time that you could perform that high intensity exercise. And so you could kind of apply this to cognition in that it helps you much more at the end of a workday, or if you're already neurologically stressed or fatigued or even sleep deprived. But it is kind of hard to predict every stressful or mentally fatiguing situation. But oftentimes it's pretty easy to figure out if you didn't get much sleep the night before. So during sleep deprivation, you could easily take a higher single dose of creatine in order to help maintain cognitive performance when you're running on fumes. It's kind of like giving your brain a quick energy buffer to keep firing on all cylinders. But how much are we talking here? Well, there probably are some mild neurological benefits at the five grams per day that people are taking for exercise performance. But for neurological and cognitive benefits, most of the studies are suggesting at least 10 grams per day as kind of a maintenance dose for those unpredictable stressors and mentally fatiguing days. However, for acute situations like major sleep deprivation or targeted cognitive boosts, some studies suggest an even higher single dose, such as 20 grams, to quickly elevate brain energy levels and then going back to 10 grams for maintenance. Now, some of you may think that those are very high doses, but people sometimes creatine load with 20 grams per day for five to seven days straight when they first start taking creatine so they can saturate their muscles a little quicker. And so it's not like 20 grams per day is completely unheard of. And creatine has been shown for years to be safe and well tolerated by most individuals. So I won't go into all the details on safety and possible side effects because I actually covered that in a longer creatine video that I did a while back. So if you want more info on that, I'll link that video to this one at the end. 
But the point is, the research is showing that creatine isn't just about building your muscles anymore. It's also about supporting and boosting cognitive function. Who would have thought that the supplement that used to be stereotyped as a supplement for muscle heads could now totally be targeted to nerdy brainiacs with clever marketing like, I think they should use a slogan like, brain before brawn, creatine. And if any supplement company uses that, I do want a royalty. But thanks for watching everyone. I hope you learned something new and useful today and I'll see you in the next video.